Hello, hello. Hello and welcome to Keep It Colorful. My name is Jesse. Hang on, I've got the giggle. I'm so sorry. Let me start over. Hello, hello, and welcome to Keep It Colorful. Oh, my hubby Don just did something really funny. Hang on, hang on. Let's try that again. Professional like. Okay. Hello, hello, and welcome to Keep It Colorful. My name is Jessie Robertson, and I do two new acrylic painting tutorials every weekend. And today I'm so excited to be painting with you. We're going to be painting this adorable brown bear. Now, this class is part of a series of bears. This class is part of a series of animals, that is, the bear being our fourth animal. We have been painting animals in a half face, really dynamic perspective, and really focusing on how to create realistic texture in the fur. We're gonna use some brushes that make making marks like this a little bit easier than if we had to paint each one with say a little round brush. So we're really gonna zoom in and focus on those textures. We've paired that with a really fun and expressive background. We're gonna do some splatter painting. We're gonna use a little bit of glazing liquid to do some transparent layers. It's gonna be great fun. And this tutorial includes a drawing lesson as well. So we're gonna be doing something called the grid method. And we're gonna block ourselves out a little grid of six by six. And I always like to put horizontals in for our animal faces as well, which is gonna make drawing them a lot easier of course, you can just freehand it as well. I find the grid gives a little bit of structure and you can use a grid to draw anything that you want. It's an incredibly old method for giving the eye something to grab hold of, some proportions in a framework in which we can work with when we're translating something we're looking at into a drawing on our own paper. So that's what we're gonna cover today. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we do, I wanted to let you know that today's tutorial is live, so feel free to say hello to me in the comment section. Let me know where you're tuning in from today and how is the weather in your part of the world. I'm painting with you today in my little studio in Cape Breton in Canada. It is a cold and snowy day, the perfect kind of weather for snuggling up and doing a little bit of painting. So the way my tutorials work is I try to keep them to about two to two and a half hours maximum. So I'm gonna keep painting along at a steady pace. Now, if at any time you feel like you want to pause, please paint at a pace that's comfortable for you. In fact, it's best when we're doing a tutorial to kind of observe a technique and then pause so we can really zone in and focus on our own work. Because of course we can watch and learn and do at the same time. So I know some people feel pressure to keep up with me, but don't worry about it. You pause anytime you need to. We're going to get through this together one step at a time. Okay, like all of my classes, this one is free for a whole week for you to enjoy. So if you're painting from a different time zone or you're busy during a live class, come back anytime during the week and paint it at your own leisure. Now, if you would like to keep the class beyond the free week, you can tip to own a copy to keep for just $5. And anything that you tip to own on my website is yours to keep for lifetime access. So you can watch your favorite classes again and again. All right, you guys, let's get started. But first, who do I see? I see Deb tuning in, hello. I see Shirley and Lisa, hello. Joyce is tuning in, it's rainy where they live. I see Heather tuning in from New York, welcome. Michelle from Wyoming. Char is tuning in from BC, Canada. Josie is turning in from Quebec, welcome. All right, everyone, here we go. I'm gonna change the camera angle here, so we are facing down at my desk. Oh, I've never broken out laughing in a tutorial before at the beginning. My hubby Don secretly tries to make me laugh a lot, but this time it worked. Usually I'm more like a loot. Okay, here we go. So here is 
my desk and everything we need to create our cute little bears. Let's go over our supplies. Now, first and foremost, you're gonna need something to paint on. Today, I'm working in a watercolor sketchbook. This is my favorite sketchbook for painting with acrylics, and it is the Canson, their watercolor paper. And this is 140 pound paper, you see under my um, finger here, 140 pounds means it's a nice heavy weight for painting on with acrylic. And the size I'm using is nine by 12 inches. And if you need to save space, filling a sketchbook is a great way to do that. This is about the width of a single canvas and there are 30 pages. And I have only one page left in this sketchbook, but you can fill a sketchbook. I love it when they're almost done. This is way back in the summer when we were painting birthstones. What else have we got in here? And we moved into autumn, our little summer church, our wildflower meadows. Anyway, if you fill a sketchbook, it's kind of like a trip down memory lane. Some upcoming tutorials in here. It's great to have a place. This was another painting in the series where we painted a lynx last time. Okay, so grab something to paint on. It could be a sketchbook like this watercolor paper, but of course you're welcome to paint on canvas board, which is canvas wrapped around hardboard. Or you could paint on canvas, whatever you prefer or whatever you have on hand. If you're painting in a sketchbook like me and you like to leave your paintings in your sketchbook, you may want to grab a thin piece of shiny cardboard or even plastic or glass, just something that's a little bit bigger than your actual paper. And this will protect any paints from oozing around the sides and gluing the pages together. So something to paint on. You're also going to need a big jar of water and something to dry your brushes off on like paper towel or an old rag. For brushes for today, I'll show you the ones that I'm going to be using, but please feel free to approximate the size in bristle shape if you're rooting through your collection looking for something to paint with today. We have a series of standard brushes and then the special effects brushes or the texturizing brushes for creating our fur. Let's go over those. We will be using a number eight filbert brush. This one is about the size of my thumb. A number six bright brush. I have two little round brushes today, a number zero round, and this teensy little one is, oh, sorry, this is a number one round, and this teensy little one is a number zero round brush. These are great for the little details in our eye, in the mouth, in the nose, or if we want an individual brush stroke in our hair. I also want you to grab a quarter inch flat brush, like a number six or a number four flat. If you have both, you can use both. They're great for filling in smaller mass areas of color. Now onto those texture tools. Some of my favorite brushes for creating fur. A bristly fan brush. This is a fan brush found in the oil painting section of the art store. As you can see, it is a very bristly texture. I'll also be using a little mini acrylic fan brush today. This is a tiny size 10-0 fan brush. You can see how small it is next to my thumb. That edge of this brush is perfect for creating fur. We're also going to be using some wisp brushes and that's spelt W-I-S-P. You can see this is a filbert brush with the round tip. This is a quarter inch flat brush and they are missing some segments or some segments have been cut out of their bristles giving them that wonderful texture that you can see just by looking at them is going to create some super excellent hair on our bear. 
We're going to begin with our dark background today and we'll do a little bit of drawing. So for today, I want you to grab a white chalk pencil. I just sharpened my pencil and now I don't know where I put it, but I'll get another one. Hang on. I love these so much. I have a whole jar of them. Oh, it's right under my, here it is. A white chalk pencil. These are fabulous for drawing on a dark background. So it's just chalk. So there you see you have it on. You could dip a sleeve or a cloth in your water jar and then you can just wipe it right off. So a white chalk pencil. For colors for today, we have a nice limited palette. We'll be using burnt umber brown. Some cadmium red, medium hue. Cadmium yellow, medium. As well as titanium white and Mars black. We're going to put our grid on to help guide us as we draw our bear. So you will want to have a ruler handy. When I'm painting along in acrylics, I always paint with my trusty blow dryer. This allows us to dry our layers and control the dry time of that paint instead of waiting for it to dry. For our backgrounds today, we will be using some glazing liquid. This is my favorite medium. It creates see-through layers of paint. So it creates beautiful blended effects in acrylic. So the way we got this kind of light glow around the bear, something we're gonna use our glazing liquid for. It's not part of the main feature, which is the bear. So if you do not have glazing liquid, you can substitute with water for today's painting. All right, you guys, that's it for supplies. So we're gonna go ahead and start step one. Now, if you're painting in a sketchbook and you like the look of this white border, you can tape up your edges. However, I'm gonna use the whole width of the sheet today just because it makes it a little bit easier for making our grid. This is nine by 12 inches, so it breaks up really nicely into threes and fours. I am, however, gonna tape over the holes in the binding because paint can get in there, and I like to paint with reckless abandon. So I do a little bit of preparatory work. Okay, let's get into step one. I want you to pour out some of your titanium white and some of your Mars black. Black. And some white. We're gonna go ahead and mix us some shades of gray along with our black. So let's take our number six bright brush. It's a nice compact brush, great for mixing without absorbing all the paint into the bristles. We're gonna take a blob of white, a big blob, and add to that a small scoop of black and we should get kind of a charcoal-y gray. And then we'll take some of our charcoal-y gray and add it to some white so we have a light gray. Don't worry about the exact colors here because we're really gonna blend it all down on the canvas. Let's take a look at how far into the painting our bear comes. So if I were to cut this picture plane in half, you see the bear comes just past halfway. So we will want some of these light colors. Like if this is halfway over, a little past halfway. We're gonna start filling it in with this color. 
So some of our darker grays. We can actually switch to a bigger brush now, like this filbert. Some of our lighter grays in the center here. I want you to a nice, thick, juicy amount of paint for me, okay? People often think I add stuff to my paint to make it blend for longer. I just add lots of paint, okay? And then in with the black around the perimeter. Grab a big, juicy amount of paint, and we're going to paint fast and loose, okay? The background's going to be a few layers and techniques, so don't overthink this. We're just going to get these juicy colors on, bring the black up and in towards that medium gray. And then you might need a little bit more paint around the edge just to start softening this together. Now, once it's all on, I like to take my filbert, instead of using the tip of it like we normally do, hold it flat so you're using the whole fat side like this. So not the tip, the fat side. We're going to, you can rinse your brush if you like. We have to move fast and loose through this technique, okay? And take the whole cat tongue side of the brush and use it to scrub the edge together. Don't worry if there's little bits of texture. This is going to be a really fun background with lots of marks. So it doesn't have to be all even. Rinse your brush anytime you need to. And just tap it off on a napkin, squeeze out excess water, and keep blending. You can pull off extra paint if you want to keep blending without bringing the color you just touched into the next section. So I just touched this white or light gray bit. So my brush will have light gray on it. So if I touch here, it's going to bring that light gray in there. And now if I touch here, it will bring the dark gray in. So I would like to have a paper towel nearby. You don't have to wash in between each color, but just tap it with your towel. So if I'm in here working away at my light grays and I don't want to move it over there, I just give it a little pull. And you can use a reusable cloth as well, you guys, like a old dish towel. You know, I have a set of tea towels in my house. There's kind of like a pecking order. There's the pretty tea towels that no one's allowed to touch except for drying their hands. And then there's the kind of grody cooking towels. Those are things that you might cover <laughs> bread with. And then there's towels that are so ripped apart, they're only for wiping up messes. And then there's towels that are so falling apart they become painting towels. And that is the towel pecking order in our house. So you can use tea towels or old socks that have holes. You just need something fabric and absorbent. Okay, so this is the first part of our blend. I know that moves fast, but as you can see, the acrylic paint dries quite quickly. So we do wanna move fast and loose through this technique. And once it's done, we can relax and roll our shoulders, get ready for the next step, 
which is going to be adding some splatter paint to this background. This is great fun and it gives such energy and texture to this painting. If you have never splattered before, we're going to use one of our lighter grades here. And I do want to mention because, well, in our part of the world, it's winter. But even if you live somewhere that's hot and warm right now, Florida or Arizona or something, uh, your paints might be drying out on you. Here we have our heat on, sometimes a wood stove, the air gets quite dry. So you can just use water to rehydrate your paints. And instead of dripping it in, you can get a spray bottle. This came in a set that I bought for my plants and I commandeered a couple for painting and just lightly spread your paints. If you see them starting to dry out, just a gentle spritz. Okay, on to splattering. Take a brush, like a bright brush, and I want you to grab water from your cup. My cup's just off to the side here. I'm gonna start with this light gray, and you don't need much. Just take a little toothpaste-sized dollop of your paint and drip water into it until it's so runny that if you were to lift up your palette, it would slide right off. Now for little splatter, you are going to take your brush and you're gonna pull the bristles back like this. Aim it about a foot away from your painting and splatter, splatter, splatter. You know, our bear is going to be in here, but we still want to make sure we've got a nice amount of this. Now that's all very uniform and we do go in once the bear is on. We create the specific glow around him at the end of the painting with the glazing liquid. But for now, got some little uniform splatters. I got some nice big ones in here too. And some of these are caused by flicking the paint instead of just doing the splatter. So if you're brave, we're gonna do some tossing of the paint. I love long handle brushes for this. Okay, make sure that paint's nice and runny and I'm gonna kind of flick it like this with my wrist from about a foot away. I want some bigger drops, some fun marks. Whoa, it's a huge one. I like some of these. Others I might tap in with a fan brush. Either way, I wanna get some of that. Whoa, <laughs> I've never done that with my fan brush before. All right, I'm getting carried away. Anything we can do to loosen it up, have fun. I like this one and this one. Sometimes if you're always in the same direction, your splatter will go in the same direction. So I was splattering with my brush this way. I could change it up. You just take some bigger watery dollops into here. You can splatter with the black too. So in areas that are lighter, you can see some of my black splatter up here. Remember for that splatter, it's gotta be super runny about the consistency of a 2% milk. So I might splatter with some dark color as well. 
If you splatter far away, it will go all over. And if you splatter up close, it will concentrate. Okay, I hope you're having fun with this technique. It should be really loose, really expressive, and it will pair really nicely with our bear and the more controlled and modeled form of that bear. So once you have your background on, we are going to dry this so we can start gritting it up and sketching on our bear. If you have your blow dryer, grab it. If not, you can watch along and continue when your painting is dry. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna turn it on hot and I'm gonna move it all around. You won't hear the blow dryer, it's silent, so if you don't hear me for a few seconds, that's why. Here we go. All right, now when your background is dry, we're gonna start putting on our grid so that we can sketch up our bear. Now that background was really loosey-goosey, expressive. It should get you playing in the paint and just having fun. Anything that you do in the background, you can just go over and add to kind of infinitely until you're either done painting or sick of painting for the day. So that was the loosey-goosey part of this tutorial. Now we're going to get into some more structured elements. And we've used a grid for all of our animals, and we have used the same grid for all of our animals. So. There's differences. We did a lynx. I think it's in here somewhere. Yeah, so here we have done a lynx. Here they are, you guys. A lynx, a fox, and a wolf. So as you can see, there's just really subtle differences in the shape of the face. So the fox has a bit more of a narrow nose. The 
wolf has more hair around its chin. So we're going to have some subtle differences here. So now we're going to sketch on our grid. Grab a ruler if you don't have one. The grid that we're gonna be using today is thirds. We're gonna be using thirds. Now we're gonna put thirds both vertically and horizontally, and I'm just gonna gently lay these brushes. I should make something more permanent since this is a series, but this works too. So we're gonna draw a grid of thirds. So if you have a ruler and you want to be precise, just measure the length of your canvas and the height of your canvas. So as we talked about in the beginning, my paper here is nine by 12 which makes it nice and easy for dividing into thirds. There'll be three, six, nine. I'm gonna take my white pencil and I do little tap dashes at the bottom and the top. At three, six, nine. And then we're gonna draw these vertical lines. I'm gonna make my lines pretty heavy so that they show up well, but you don't have to make your lines quite so heavy. They're just for your eyes only. And mine is 12 inches long. So let's come down at four, eight. And we'll divide this into thirds. Okay, so four and eight. Now this is a classical, you can't even see my first mark. This is a classical device for sketching. And it's helpful because you can make your grid as small as you want. And it gives you a frame of reference. So the lower third in our painting corresponds to the lower third in the drawing. This is the center or the left center third and a lot happens in this area with the eye. Okay. I want you to make a few more lines for me.
So I want you to cut through the diagonal for me as well. So just come through the corners like this, corner to corner. And then we're going to come through the other diagonal like this, corner to corner. And I also want you to come right through the middle like this. Good. Now you guys, we are going to begin with this section here, which is this section where we have a lot of action going on in the face. And here's what I want you to do. And this square, I want you to cut this square, just this square in half vertically as well. And that is this square here. So if I were to come onto my bear's face and just sketch really lightly halfway through approximately, here we go, move it to the left little halfway through. And halfway, this center line here is actually right here, the center. And if I were to continue drawing that center line over so we can cut this little square in half, you'll see that the eye is in the upper quarter of this square right here. So our eye, draw it lightly to begin, is approximately here. So you get the idea. You can follow along with me or you can use this as your guide. I like doing those big features first. So next up, we're gonna sketch on the nose. And the nose is also in this quadrant above it and kind of comes a bit below. It's kind of just below the halfway line. If we come across halfway like this, you'll see the nose starts just below that halfway line. And it's a shape a little something like this. This is a half face. So you're going to draw your nose a little something like this to start. We've kind of got slightly more than half. So here's the nose, and then we see the top of our nose as well. So I want you to draw another line on top of this and just sort of round it in. So the whole shape is a little something like this. This is a brown bear, and all bears are both cute and terrifying looking because they are huge, and they've got the teeth and the claws, and they run fast and they swim, but they're also such shy animals and you're lucky if you ever get a glimpse of one in real life because they are quite shy of people. Um, this is a brown bear. In my opinion, the brown bears are some of the cutest bears. They have the hugest ears. Um, the cubs are also really cute. The Kodiak bear is a type of brown bear as well. They're really huge brown bears. They have big noses and the nose, again, a shape a little something like this. So a nice big nose on this bear comes just below the halfway point. And again, if I put another brush halfway through here, oh my God, this feels like a game stacking these brushes. <laughs> Try to make it not fall down. It's like Django with brushes. Okay, so that nose just below this halfway point and comes pretty much to the bottom, it does dip down a little bit into this lower quadrant. Okay, so we have this little line that's dividing this section in half for placing our eye. And that very much follows the bridge of the nose up until we get to where the muzzle 
widens a little bit at the mouth, okay? So let's draw a little line. Instead of straight down, let's kind of come in at the eye and come out just a tiny little bit at the nose and then down. A little something like this is our shape, okay? A little something like this is the shape. Now this is a half face, but it's almost three quarter. This is our nose. If you draw a line up the center of your nose, we really see that we see a tiny bit more than half. And that's been the same with all of our animal paintings so far. We see that tiny little bit of this side of the nose as well. Okay, so we're gonna come down like this, not very far under the nose for that muzzle. And this is where the kind of mouth happens. So I like to bring this, I would thicken, thicken this up in the black just a little bit down below, and then I'd sketch on a little chin. So you can put on a little chin that then comes up to meet the rest of the muzzle. Okay. So essentially it's this width getting just a little bit wider towards the mouth. We're gonna have some nostrils in the nose as well. Kind of like little ovals towards the top of the nose. You guys are doing great. We've got our main features on. Now let's start rounding out our bear's face. And that's why we have these diagonal lines, you guys. I'm gonna take away this half one and I'm going to carefully see if I can stack some diagonals. Ooh, this should be a board game. It's fun, okay. I'm gonna use thinner brushes, hang on. There. So you can see these diagonals, which is what we used for our links. The top of the head follows this diagonal and the chin follows this diagonal. So you see the chin for here kind of comes right up about to that halfway point in the painting before it veers up and starts to follow this angle. Okay, so these little lines are here to help us. Now let's look at this upper quadrant of the painting right here, where our forehead attaches to the ear. So this first section, we have mostly forehead. When we get into the middle section, you see how the ear fills it? Look at the negative space too, so you can see the angle of the ear. And by the way, I'm just showing you how to use the grid for this drawing. Um, you can, these, you would have your ear up a little bit more. You could have a smaller ear or a larger ear. Okay, so that forehead comes close to the top of the painting. I want you to dip it in a little bit. At the center of the face, which is this line that comes right through the bottom of the nose and up. You can dip it in a little bit there. It's pretty much a straight line that just dips in a little bit there. Okay, now let's look at how the face then comes just a little bit past this rectangle, whoop, before it starts to come down towards the very center of our page, and then it's gonna round back down, and then there's long hairs under the chin, okay? So here we go, we're gonna kind of fuzz down, and we can soften these lines so they're not like perfect diagonals. Okay, then let's come down a little bit before we start coming under the face. 
Okay, so I'm kind of following this diagonal loosely. There we go. And under the chin, okay, some hairs hanging down. Now, if you look at the neck of a brown bear, they don't just have one layer of fur. It is like where their shoulders connect to their head, a whole other, they have like beautiful fur coats. So we're gonna have another section of hair down below. So I want you to start into this middle quadrant here, kind of up, right where we kind of start bending down in the middle here. Now come down and we'll just pull down another layer of fur kind of coming down to this line here. And then we have the big shoulder, which comes all the way out into this lower right-hand quadrant here. So that shoulder, where does it start? It starts up here, okay? Good, and that's how we use a grid to help us. Now let's give our bear an ear up and down a nice big ear in this upper middle quadrant of the grid. All right, now I'm gonna move these lines. Feel free to pause the video if you need to. You can take screenshots of any of this if you find it helpful. Okay, I'm gonna take these brushes away because we are done with this section. I like to have a few more reference lines, the shadow around the eye. So if we were to come up to this kind of line here, this is a, just kind of above the eye. We're gonna have a little shadow. It's gonna come out and down, and then it's gonna round back down into the muzzle, okay? We're gonna have a shadow area around the eye. Kind of like this shape. Okay. And then there's an area of hair around the bear's eye. I like to call it an eyebrow. I'm sure that's not the technical name, but it's gonna kind of come out over that shadowy area right at the top of this section here. And it's just gonna come down like this. So we've got this kind of like eyebrow shape. And something else I find helpful, at least in the forehead, is to give an indication of the direction that we're going to be pulling the marks of our fur. So on the nose, the direction is up, 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 kind of out from this center line, up and out. They're little hairs in the nose, but they come up and out and up and out. And then when we get to the top of the head, they're gonna to start to round around like this. And when we get into the sides of the face, they kind of come out straight and then they start to kind of round down. So the hairs kind of come out up the nose, around the eye, and then out and down. And that's gonna be it for our reference marks. All right, that was a lot of thinking. Remember that the underpainting and the drawing are not the finished painting. We go through quite a few layers with our texturizing brushes to go from here to a three-dimensional looking animal. So this is just a rough guide to place things for us. I like to start with some of the dark black areas in the painting, but still let's get ready and pour out our other colors. We're using a lot of brown. So next to my black, let's squeeze out some burnt umber brown, maybe two blobs. We're gonna to wanna to have a nice gradient. And then I want you to squeeze out squirt of your yellow 
and a little squirt of your red. So a squirt of your yellow and a little squirt of your red. You're gonna to need to make sure you have some white too. And let's mix ourselves some color. The first color I want you to make is orange. We're gonna add orange to some of our brown to give it that very warm brown bear color, almost like a sepia brown. So it takes a big blob of yellow and add to that a much, much smaller scoop of red. So this tiny little dot of red into this whole pile of yellow. Get ourselves a nice orange color. We'll want this for our mixes. Okay, so we have our brown up here. I'm gonna split this in two. We're gonna make a little bit of a blackish brown. So take the tiniest, tiniest little bit of black just on that corner tip of your brush Mix it into one of your pools of brown. That's gonna be our darkest kind of blackish brown. Then we're gonna have a pod of our plain brown. Rinse your brush. Then we're gonna get into a medium brown. So take a scoop of white and add it to some brown. Medium brown. Okay, and then a light brown, and then a really light brown. As we use this, our gradient will get smooshed together, but this, we kind of want a nice steps in between these browns. And for the bear, again, we used a lot of a kind of warm sepia brown. So for some of these lighter browns, take a scoop of your orange and mix it in. You can see this color here. This medium brown as well, it's got a big scoop of that orange and mix it in. So it's more of a warm brown. And we're gonna do the same with our light brown. I'm going to take some of our orange and we're going to mix it in. Funnily enough, because I didn't wash my brush, this little section of orange with just a bit of brown in it is also a perfect color. Let's mix one more color. White with a little bit of yellow and a little bit of brown. In the muzzle, we have some of this really light kind of yellowy brown. So I want you to have a gradation through browns, just varying amounts of blackish brown, plain brown, medium, and then light browns. We want to make sure those don't dry out on the palette. So a little spray bottle with water. And I just very gently mist the top while we're working on these. Okay. So as we talked about, we're going to start with some of the darker areas of our painting. I want to go around that eye. So grab your little zero round brush, that's this one, and come into some plain black. Add a little water to it. I already have some watery black where we splattered. So it's a really runny black. Now I'm going to snuggle in so that we can come up here and just circle around your eye. This can be a bit of a thicker line. Okay. Now we're gonna bring out a little tear duct by coming kind of from the top of the eye and coming down. 
Okay, so you got a little tear duct in our eye like this. And you can just fill that in with black. And from here, widen at the top of the eye. Now, so from here, we came down on this side, we're gonna come up. And in this black is where we're gonna put that little highlight for the eyelid. Okay. I also want you to take some black, come into the middle of your eye. Without the color, this is gonna look really intense, but stick in that pupil with me. Okay. So, little sheep around the eye. All right, you guys, I have to tell you, just in case I roll off of it and I make a loud sound, I got a new stool for the studio. It's like a kind of posture stool on wheels so I can wheel around like a mad wheelie demon. Uh, but getting on it, it's kind of like a saddle and it helps you sit upright when you're painting, which is so nice. If you spend hours in a job sitting, having a posture pedic sort of stool is so nice, but I feel like I'm mounting a huge horse when I get on it and it has wheels. So <laughs> I keep thinking I'm gonna roll right off my stool during a live tutorial. So if that happens and I scream, don't worry, I've just rolled off my chair and was surprised, just in case. Okay, let's get into our next black section, which is gonna be our nose. We can switch to a slightly bigger brush Grab your number one round brush. Grab your number one round brush. And we're gonna go ahead and paint the lower section of the nose. Nice big bare nose. And you can give it a little heart shape curve if you like, or flat across. Like this. Now let's continue with some of that black. Draw a little line straight down. Okay. And then we have our mouth. So that mouth, you can essentially draw as a line that comes straight across the width of the muzzle. And to give it a little bit of character, I like to come into this center part and just pull it out a little bit. So I'm gonna make it a little bit wider, kind of where it connects, like this. And then at the bottom of the mouth, I'm just gonna open it a little bit, pull it down a little bit. Okay. And then let's come under our chin with the black and let's come up the side of our muzzle here. It's gonna come in towards our eye Good. Now while we're using this black, take some black, mix it with a little bit of white or I still have some of this gray. I wanna make a charcoal gray. That's almost black, but not quite. And put this on the top section of the nose where we see the width of the nose. Like this. And let's also take this dark gray and use it to 
block in our nostrils. So if you remember, they kind of come into the face a little something like this. And one on the other side. All right, you're doing great. That's our blacks. Actually, we have a few more dark colors, but now let's get into some of those fun texturizing brushes. I'm gonna start with this little mini 10 o fan. And I'm gonna go into that blackish brown and let's do this dark area around the eye. That kind of place that we sectioned off in our drawing. A little bit above the eye, too, here. So, if you remember, if either of you, any of you out there have done the previous animals with me, you know that we really build this up in layers. Details don't get added to the end of a painting typically, unless you're painting in a style called Alloprima, where you put each color on as you go. But painting in layers is typically how we're gonna build up a painting, starting with the basic values. So first, we're gonna create that framework of where the lights and darks are, and then we're gonna use that to create texture on top. So this section here, for instance, is just the dark area with a medium brown layered over top of it. And once we have that base on, you'll see just how easy it is to create fur and to mimic textures. But first, we can't be shy about going through the underpainting phase. And the underpainting is again where we create that scaffolding or that layer of values from which we can build upon. So some darks. Let's add some more darks, even some black into this lower part of our bear. Use that fan brush, fill in the area. Okay, we can get some darks right underneath this section of the chin, just pull down in the direction you see that fur going. You can turn your brush up the long skinny way even and kind of pull down. Let's take some of this blackish brown into the forehead. into the ear. You can take some pure black into the center of the ear too. Let's take some blackish brown under our chin and just drag it out with the fan brush, just creating a nice rich sort of base layer here.
Good. And now let's take some of our medium brown, come along the top of this eyebrow area. You can use some of your plain dark brown here too. Now, one reason I really love the fan brush is because when we get into the neck fur, you can use the fat side of the brush to create that really lovely kind of wispy texture. But we can also turn the brush up the long skinny way and create longer fur textures. So sticking with the plain brown and the next dark brown, this medium brown here, okay. This is just that first layer of color. Now I want you to grab your big whisk brush, your quarter inch whisk brush. And then let's go into our next dark color, not the really, really light ones, but this one here. This one here, kind of a medium brown. Maybe add a bit more of this orange into it. Okay. Make sure that you can see the segments in your bristles. And let's come down to the edge of this kind of first layer here. And let's do a little bit of detail with this whisk brush. So ready? You can hold it the long vertical way like this. or you can use all of the wispies. Remember the direction that the fur comes, kind of around the face. Oops. So remember, we've got this shape around the eye. I'm going to go into a slightly darker brown, keeping it nice and dark around the eye. So we've got this shape around the eye. So I'm going to take my whisk brush and I'm just going to pull some texture in a brown that's just a little bit lighter, some tiny little hairs into here. Okay. Little wispies. 
very subtle. And I'm going to pull some of these into this eyebrow area too. Kind of coming up and out and over. You can tap with the tip of the brush too. If you ever get too light, just go back into your dark color. So building up our layers nice and slow. We'll get lighter and lighter as we go, but we want to start dark and work our way into those highlights. Now you can use your quarter inch wisp brush as well, which is a smaller one. And let's use that into some of the areas in the face and around the forehead. So I want to get a nice first layer into the muzzle. So I might mix some of my kind of third lightest and second lightest color, this one being light, second lightest, third lightest, and start somewhere like this kind of color, like a beigey color. And I'm going to come around my nose. And my eyes. Where first we fill it in and then we kind of break it up. Come under the mouth. The hairs in the muzzle and mouth area are going to be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to take kind of a medium brown that's darker than the color we've put in our nose. And if you kind of tap this down the center here a little bit. Remember this is kind of the center of our face here. And as we come up the forehead, the hairs on this side are gonna start to kind of come out this way. And the hairs on this side are gonna start to come out this way. I want you to take your third, approximately third lightest brown, and we're going to come into the top of the head here. And we're going to lighten it up. And I want you to take these little hairs 
And I want you to continue lightening at the edge of the bear's face, kind of just pulling out with that little wisp brush. Actually, if you have a bristly fan, you can load just the tip of that bristly fan and you can use it here too. Just pulling out a little bit here. The edge of the face. And pull a few little hairs into the cheek here too. So we're just using a color that's a little bit lighter than the background. Peggy says, Jesse, I've really enjoyed this series. Maybe we could extend it and do a raccoon. That's a great idea. I want to do a moose and an owl and a badger and a raccoon. Let's keep working into the area around the eye. So take a color that's just a little bit lighter than the color that you have on there now. I'm using my little quarter inch wisp brush. And a little lighter here. Gonna pull up and over some little hairs, kind of just breaking it up. We can't completely cover what we have because that would defeat the purpose. You can go a little bit lighter still, just maybe on a few of these little hairs. Okay, so we're kind of breaking up what we have underneath. This part of the forehead here is a little bit darker. Just right here. Now I want to come into the lower part of the fur. I might use the corner of my big fan brush into a color, a medium dark color, like right in the middle range. Tap off your brush so there's just a little paint on there. 
and pull in the direction of the fur. You can even make an in-between color, this medium one and your dark brown. Let's come down the darkest part of the body. The hairs, the shoulder, kind of getting into the body. Just a little light on these hairs. Gonna go even darker brown. Break up that solid black with some dark browns. Now we're going to get into another layer. So our muscle is really solid. And when we get into the next layer, wipe off these chalk lines, you can see that we're going to break our muzzle up into some even smaller sections using that little wisp brush, adding some more highlights. But before we do, I want to make sure we get that first coat into our eye because this is the only part of our bear that doesn't have any color on it. And it's just staring out on us. So let's get that first layer of color into our bear's eye. All right, so for our eye, we're gonna grab our one round brush to start. Make sure you have some of your orange color. And you can mix a little bit of some of your kind of medium brown into some of that orange. I'm going to make a sepia color. We're really going to make this eye glow and it's going to start with a bit of a two-tone color. So we're going to take the sepia orange into the bottom of the eye. Wipe off your brush. Go into your, take a little bit of plain dark brown, add some orange into that too. And we'll put the dark brown on top. Don't worry if you go over your pupil, it's all good. I want you to Darken the top a little more. Don't worry if you go over your pupil. I just want you to get this kind of fade in here. Of your darker brown into your lighter brown. Now we're even gonna take a little bit of our charcoal gray into the very top of the eye here. The 
This is a small area, so when we blend it, we just use little taps. Good. Layer one. I want you to go into your zero round brush and you're going to take some of your lightest kind of beige yellow color and add a little bit of orange to that. So you should have a really light kind of orangey yellow color just the tiniest bit of paint on your brush you can even tap it in first because you're going to tap this in just into the lighter side of the eye tap all the paint off your brush and use a clean brush to just fade this in just tap this in okay like this Now that's the first step. Now take that same zero round brush, go into some white, add a little bit of water till your paint's the consistency of like a heavy cream and tap off your brush so you have just a tiny bit of paint on the tip of the brush. We are gonna create a little bit of white into the eye. This is a really thin line, okay, inside. Very carefully take your brush and do a little thin white line at the bottom kind of light part of the eye, like this. Okay, now we want to define our tear duct and eyelid a little bit. We're gonna use kind of a medium gray, like this here. And I want you to take a small scoop of medium gray, rinse off your brush, and then add a little bit of brown to it. So it's kind of like a brownish gray, brownish gray. Tap off your brush. Now, if you can kind of see where your black is, we're gonna take this medium gray, leave that ring of black, and just, this is kind of like the rim of the eyelid. Just do a little line in this gray along the lower eyelid. I might come in and clean that up with some of the black. And here is that tear duct here, like this, okay. And then on top, there's still that ring of color there, a black you can put on the little eyelid. Okay, this is, should be really subtle. This isn't gonna be a really, we don't want too much light on the tear duct. You could put a little highlight in white in the tear duct, but really the rim around the eye here is gonna be Pretty dark. When you're ready, you can paint that pupil back in. And you can clean up the black if you need to. When your pupil is dry, or if you're brave enough to try when it's wet, you can take your white and we're going to go one, two highlights in the eye. 
Again, you can add a little bit more white to the white inside the bear's eye. This is right inside that first circle that we put on or a little in the tear duct. Okay, whew. A lot of work for that eye, but it really is the focal point of any being that has big eyes like this. Now let's do some highlighting in that nose. Take your time, you guys. Pause any time you need to. Just have fun, you've got this. Don't forget to breathe. We're gonna come into a light gray color. And we're gonna put a little highlight into the nose. So we're gonna get a lighter gray. Now we're gonna put a little highlight along the top of the nose in the light gray. And you can kind of blend it out and up with a darker gray color if you like. We're going to put a little highlight in the nose and under the nostrils as well. So kind of on the underside of the nostrils. I do this in light gray first and then I come in with a little bit of white. You can come into the mouth as well and right in the lower lip, just put a little highlight, kind of like a little smiley face in the lip. I like to do it in the light gray first and then just using a little round brush, just a tiny bit of paint on there, okay? So tap your brush off and put a little highlight in the mouth too. Good. Now that we have some highlights in that nose and in that mouth, we can get up into the fur and add more highlights in there as well. Now you may have a favorite texturizing brush, your big wisp, your little wisp, your mini fan or your big bristly fan. In fact, it doesn't matter which one you use. Sometimes you need a smaller brush to get in a smaller space, but they all make amazing fur texture. So we're gonna get into some colors that are a little bit lighter here. Let's get into our lighter beigey color, not the pure lightest, or maybe mix the pure lightest and the second lightest to start. We're gonna come along the top of the nose and with this little wisp brush, you can tap as well. The hairs on the nose, like if you have a cat or a dog, most of them have really tiny hairs in the nose. So you can even just tap with the tip of this brush to get some texture. Okay. We're gonna come along the side of the nose. like this. Okay. 
and then down the edge of the muzzle. I'm going to take a bit of a darker color and do some little taps in here. put a little highlight in here as well and it just along the lower lip I'm going to take the lightest colors in the muzzle. So as we come up into the forehead, we're going to get into the more medium colors. So we're going to start to come around the top of the eyebrow again. And of course, I'm just calling it an eyebrow. Now less is more. We already have a nice layer, so we don't want to cover up what we have. We just want to break it up a little bit. Maybe a little bit of a darker color. So we can kind of leave a little bit of darkness between the eyebrow and then kind of coming up the, note, the bridge a little more. We might have like another lighter area of fur here. Okay. And it gets really light at the edge of the face here where light is really hitting the bear. Under the ear. And then the top of the head is going to be quite light here as well. This is where it's kind of like we're looking down at the bear. So this is like the top of his head. And this is kind of like the part of his head that's actually going down into his back. So it'd be like, you know, if you could see the top of my head here, that's the top of his head here. Okay. And then we can use some of the darker, like medium colors to add some texture in the forehead. Remember that he's kind of got this part down the center of his face and the hairs kind of come out on each side a little bit like this. I'm gonna use an even darker color. You can, you know, like I said, this would kind of become a smooshed in gradient because often I'm wanting to make kind of like an in-between color for this. Now we can use one of our medium colors, maybe even a little bit more orange in it. Under the eye, that kind of eye socket where the hairs are a little bit darker, you know, maybe we want some dark lines, but still to accentuate under the eye here a little bit more. In a darker area that's in shadow, we still see contrast or the areas like of light and dark. It's just less. It's not like this light and then this dark here. It's more like medium to dark instead of pure light to dark kind of thing. Okay. You can get even lighter lights, like some of your brightest whitish kind of yellowy lights around, especially the nose down here.
you can keep trying to get a little bit lighter. Like I want a bit more texture up in kind of this area. So I'm going to take my whisk brush Now I want really light down here, but you don't have to go quite so light down there if you don't want to. You could keep it a bit more light in the face and a bit more dark and mysterious around these edges. For the big hairs, I do love using that big old pan brush. Just a bit of paint on the edge. Okay, now let's go up into the ear. It's the only area we don't have any fuzz. Once we finish that area, we'll just do our final tweaks, see if we want to get a little bit lighter into the face or if we want to keep certain areas darker. I want to add some really glowy highlights, of course. But let's get into that ear. It's darker in the middle because that's kind of where the center of his ear is. And then it's going to get a little bit lighter towards the outer edges of his ear. Maybe we'll go a little mini fan for a bit. Start with a darker color, like a medium brown. Let's pull up some little wispies. Work your way up into those lights. Then we're going to get into some of our medium light color. I'm going to use my little wisp brush for this. Or maybe my big one.
get some fur into that ear. Now at this point, everything on here has a little bit of paint on it. So at this point, we're just going to kind of tweak up our values, our range of lights and darks until we get it looking the way that we want. So grab your favorite brush. You might want to grab a smaller brush for some of these smallest details. And I might take some of my lighter medium colors from this value here and For some of the longer streaks, sometimes I'll take my wisp brush kind of on the side and I'll come down and up, kind of like a little triangle shape. You can also try pulling up and then down. They have really kind of thick fur. It's not kind of, it's not soft like a fox or a wolf. They have really kind of much coarser fur. So you can get more gritty textures. That's why I'm not using my wisp today or my script liner today. I'm going for these more big brushes to try to get that texture. So see how just a subtle highlight can really pop that up. Maybe a little darker for the ones below. Now my partner and I live next to a forest and there are bears here. I haven't seen one yet, but my favorite time to walk is spring because there's no bugs out yet. In summer, the forest gets very home to nature. So lots of bugs. And I'm always like feeling like I'm going to stumble upon a bear just waking up from sleep. And I'm going to look like a little rabbit to that bear. Or I kind of walk quiet like a hobbit and just accidentally startling a bear. I know they will kind of, they can hear you really well. And a bear is more likely to run from you unless, of course, it's quite young and it thinks you're a threat. But still, I've never run into a bear. I have no idea what I would do if I ran into a bear. But I think about what I might do if I ran into a bear. If I had a camera, maybe try to take a picture of it. But I remember my grandma and we also, I lived with my grandma for a year and we lived next to the woods when I was a little girl and she had all this advice, but I was like seven 
And I forget what animals it's like, make yourself bigger and make loud noises and which ones it's like, make yourself smaller and pretend you're a rabbit, you know, eating grass <laughs> or clover. I can never remember which is which. I wish I had paid more attention. I'm adding a little bit of almost white into the muzzle. The nice thing about <clears throat> the age of the internet is you can find answers to those questions. Now I know we have the Canada lynx, which is another uh, animal that we painted in this wildlife series. And we have those all over. In fact, they almost went extinct. I think the Canada lynx is, lynx is still on the endangered species list. We actually have a pretty big population of them in Cape Breton. Another big, beautiful, shy apex predator crucial to the food chain. So I'm adding some highlights to the top of the head and the ear. So anywhere that you see the highlights, you can make them brighter. Sometimes if I brighten a highlight, I, I have to add a color, a medium color next to it so it doesn't look so stark. So it kind of makes sense in the light schematic where it's light there and then we kind of fade off. Okay, once you've highlighted your bear and are feeling happy or maybe need to think about it a little more, we have one more step, you guys, and that's to use the glazing liquid into the background. Once more, if you do not have glazing liquid, you can just use water. If you used a white chalk, charcoal or watercolor pencil to create your grid, you can just take a paper towel with some of your paint water and just rub it off. So we use that light to really pop out the bear and give it a little bit of a glow. Here is the glazing liquid. I love the one by Golden because it has a slow dry time as well. I see a question by Pammy J. Which wisp brush do you recommend? A flat angle or Gilbert. My favorite are the flat because I find them the most versatile, um, but really all of them. I have quite a few filbert style flat, um, wisp brush. I have a lot of flat ones. I typically only use an angle brush if I'm going to be doing some foliage, but even then I prefer a flat brush to an angle brush 90% of the time. Um, so it's really up to you. Again, my preference is, is flat in filberts, um, but there's no harm if you have an option to try all three, to try all three. So I'm gonna pour out some of this glazing medium here. You're gonna see it's quite fluid, and although it looks white, if you've painted with me with glaze before, you know that this is gonna dry very clear. So we're going to take our number six bright brush. And what we want to do is make a 50 50 mixture or, you know, another thing we could do is just paint some glazing liquid right on the area. Again, if it looks white at all, don't worry, it will dry clear. And you can paint this around the bear. 
It's going to give you something to blend into. And then we can experiment using a light or medium gray. So you're going to pull some of this around the bear, your lighter color. And you can even just use the fat side of your brush to blend it out. This, the glaze is see-through, so it's just going to, if you pull this out into it or tap it in a texture, it's just going to kind of blend away. So here we get this really lovely ambient glow. Now because the glaze is already on there, you could also, we didn't have to mix it with our color, you could do some taps of a charcoal gray out to the side. So this will help pop the bear out as well. At this point in time, it's all tweaky deekies. I think I might, now the original post had a very dark under the chin sort of bare. I like some of the light colors, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. Highlighting. When our paintings are almost done, it can be helpful to just add a few marks and then step back so we don't overdo. I'm using my big Filbert Wisp here. Don't forget, you can highlight even the darkest, blackest areas with some of your dark brown or like an in-between color. The more thin you spread the paints, the more they dry out. So getting that water bottle and a gentle mist is going to help keep them hydrated while you're painting. Okay, and maybe I'll leave this one here. I'm gonna carefully pull my painter's tape up. If you feel like it's gonna start ripping your paper, you can just blast it with a blow dryer to melt the glue and it will peel off like butter. And then I'm going to remove, I'll see all that black. The page below is perfectly protected. And then when you're finished, you can go ahead, sit back, relax, roll your shoulders, give yourself a huge pat on the back because you guys, you just finished your painting for today and it's unbearably cute. So I'm going to hang around for a few minutes in case you have any questions about today's tutorial or acrylic painting in general. I see a question coming up. Oops. All right. Well, first and foremost, before I get into questions, I wanted to say that I hope you enjoyed painting the brown bear with me today. Again, we have four animals in this series, a fox, a wolf, a lynx, and the brown bear. If there are any other animals that you would like to do, uh, let me know. 
We're going to continue in this series in the half face style. We do have plenty of animals that we've done full face. This just gives us an opportunity to really blow it up and get into the fur and the textures in the eye and the nose in a two hour session. We did a full face with this kind of level of detailed um, explanation. The tutorial would be about four to five hours. So you can turn this into a full face. Remember it's three quarter. So when you go to do that drawing, you're just going to pull in um, the last third of the face. But if there's any other animals you want to do, I've heard shout outs for a raccoon, a moose. I was thinking an owl and a badger. We don't get badgers in Canada, so you can live vicariously through your paintings and paint anything you want. This tutorial will be left up free all week long. And if you love this class and want a copy to keep forever, it's just five bucks and I'll put the tip to own link right in the comment section of this class. For anyone painting up an absolute storm, I have over 400 tutorials and challenges and all subjects from landscapes to animals, cute things, cute things, magical designs, and you can have access to paint all of them for just $15 a month with our Kick Academy subscription. For anyone that wants to get their paint on, you'll love this. And I'll put a link to Kick Academy below as well. Okay, so let us get into any questions. I saw a question about glazing medium versus glazing liquid. Where did that go? Okay, I know I saw that question. I think. That's right. So glazing liquid versus glazing medium. So they're made for the same purpose. Glazing liquid is the brand name by Golden. So Golden makes this glazing liquid. Glazing medium is the version by Liquitex. And as you know, I love using Liquitex paints. I prefer the glazing liquid a little bit more by Golden because they have the slow dry time extender. I'm not sure if this is correct in the camera there. Okay, the slow dry time extender comes with the golden glazing liquid, whereas Liquitex glazing medium, it also creates those lovely see-through areas, but it dries a bit faster and I find the texture is a little bit more sticky than the golden one. So they're designed to do the same thing, but the golden having that extended dry time, I find really, really um, extra helpful for glazing. And it really depends on whether you want your paints to dry quicker or slower. If you want the slow dry time, go for the golden glazing liquid. If you want it to dry a bit faster, go for the Liquitex glazing medium. So again, both great for see-through layers. Um, I just love the golden version of their glazing medium. Okay. I saw another question. Mar says, can we do a squirrel? Someone asked, how could I go back to a tutorial after the live show? All of our tutorials are posted on Facebook and then on our website as well. If you go to my website, the address is jessierobertson.com. The last tutorial is in on the watch free page. Now I also put up 14 other tutorials for free on my website. Um, you can create a free account and log in and you can access all the other free ones on my website as well. Facebook will just have the latest tutorial on it. So if you go to the website, I put some extra special stuff on there as well. Doodly doo. Leslie wants to do a lion. Dominique says, I love what you've done with your studio. Thank you. Our neon light is a new addition. Okay, don't think I see any more questions popping up. So once again, I hope you got something out of today's class that you're feeling more relaxed. And as always, I hope you picked up a few new acrylic painting tips and tricks.
I would love to see your finished painting. I've created a private Facebook sharing group that you are welcome to join. You can share your paintings there and you can see what other people have done with their paintings as well. All right, you guys, that's it for me. Take care. And until next time, I hope you keep it colorful. Bye. Pardon? Oh, Tom said upcoming. Oh, I forgot to show you the upcoming classes. I'm having a distracted day. Okay. I did want to show you what's upcoming as well. Okay, so here are our four past animals. And I believe Dawn put those all on sale for just five bucks as well, the past ones, if anyone missed out on the past classes in the series. But let's take a look at what's coming up to finish January and head into February. So we are gonna add some color into our paintings. Tomorrow's live class is gonna be these cotton candy cactuses. So this is real, kind of southwestern or mexican kind of vibe to it we have our i never pronounce this white saguaro saguaro Sag, i'm gonna call it saguaro because i need to learn how to pronounce that properly but those big beautiful cactuses that can live for so long we're gonna inject some neon paint into this and we have several different varieties of cacti in there it's gonna be great fun again injecting a little color quite gray these days so I don't know about you but I'm excited for some neon stuff. Our next watercolor tutorial taught my, by my dear friend and artist Sarah Kamarnicki is going to be this winter barn. Again still utilizing these beginner friendly techniques basic washes kind of getting familiar with using um, the masking fluid and here we've got a nice contrast between the lights and the dark. So she'll be leading you through this class on our classes, which is every Wednesday, Watercolor Wednesday. Then Valentine's Day will be coming up. So for February, we have a few Valentine's themed tutorials, including this heart-shaped tree, some lovey-dovey giraffes. I even put hearts and the light in the background for these little cuties kissing. I do love painting animals. Then we're gonna get into fantasy themes for the rest of February. We do have some at the beginning of February the 7th, some very beginner friendly watercolor cards. In fact, each card only takes about 20 minutes. So there's four clap cards in one two hour session on February 7th. And then I'm gonna lead you through a castle balcony, getting into our fantasy themes. We're going to paint a Highland cow called I Love Moo Very Much. A dragon under a cherry blossom tree. And a unicorn, a magical unicorn walking through an enchanted forest. Okay, there's more coming up in February. I can't wait to show you the last of Fantasy February, but I figure we'll leave it there. Take care. Until the next time, I hope you keep it colorful. Bye.